Hey guys, Katie here. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. We're happy to have you. Hi, hello. Um, right now I'm going to be doing a September wrap up video, which is hastily done. I'm not going to lie to you because I looked over and was like, Katie, it's September 29th. Like I had no idea what day it was. Totally forgot there's only 30 days in September and was rushing to finish this. Like I'm halfway through a book right now, but I'm not gonna, I'm sure, well, I actually might finish it tomorrow, but I'm not gonna wait and include it. But I finished 11 books this month, which I mean, as you'll notice, is vastly different than the previous months I've had in 2020. I've had like 20 to like 23 books every month. But right now what I'm doing is I'm buddy reading a couple books, which of course like it takes a little bit longer. And then I'm annotating a lot on some of the books I'm reading, which takes a little bit longer. And quite a few of the books I'm going to mention either are for upcoming video ideas or are for videos I've already posted, like reading vlogs and such. So it took a little bit more time to read those, which is totally fine. It's just a little different for me who's used to like, so I'm trying to train myself to like really take in the reading experience instead of just the accomplishment of finishing a book. Like, do you understand? Anyway, 11 books, let's get to it. So the first book I finished in September is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Now, this is a romance and I am not a romance reader. I'm not, I don't know who I think I am. I don't like romance, okay? Like there's one notable exception, okay? Um, but everything else, I just don't care. It's not interesting enough for me. Now when romance is like a subplot or maybe like aligned right next to another plot, like fantasy or thriller, I'm like totally down for it. I love it. Or if it's a series, that's great. But like standalone romance is so freaking boring to me. Like, and I just don't relate to it. Like I just don't care. I'm sorry, I'm going on a tirade about myself. Let's talk about the book. It's about, um, a guy named Ethan and a girl named Olive and Olive's sister is marrying Ethan's brother and Olive's sister Amy is like super popular super like productive and she gets everything she wants and um, Ethan's brother is a piece of shit is that a spoiler no he's a piece of shit uh, but anyway Ethan and Amy or I'm sorry Ethan's brother don't remember his name don't care is they're getting married and they all, so they go to the wedding and they all eat like this shrimp dish. I think it's like seafood, but it's like in a buffet. And Ethan is like, I'm not eating that. And Amy's like, you know what? Neither am I. And everybody gets violently ill, like violently ill. And it lasts for like 10 days or something, except for them because they didn't eat it. So Amy had won this like crazy package for a honeymoon, like this crazy cruise ship kind of like package or whatever to go on. So she says, Amy, like you have to go. And then Ethan's brother is like, take my ticket, you go. So they basically, it's like a enemies to lovers because I just, here's the thing. I didn't like it because it didn't make any sense. Like it didn't make any sense why Olive like thought he hated her because in my opinion I was like you were just paranoid like you're just paranoid like this I don't know I don't know I didn't like it I thought it was kind of boring I didn't <sighs> whatever it's for a lot of other people booktube really loves it that's so great that's so great if you loved it I did not and that's all I'm gonna say next book okay so speaking of I like romance when it's like a subplot The Girl in 6E by A.R. Tor. now this is not a romance I super love or anything, but I thought the romance element of this book was so entertaining and interesting. Like this is something that um, Kayla from Books and Lala talks about and says like people are so polarizing about this. Like they either like love it or they think it's stupid and disgusting. And I picked it up. I found it at the Half Price Bookstore and I was like, this is it for me. This is it. Like these are the weirdest tropes. Like this is such a weirdo. Like this is a certified freak seven days a week. Do you understand? But it is for me. Like this is basically, so it's about this girl, Deanna, um, who has this like murderous rage. Like she has this like psychotic rage to kill people. Like it's not anger. She just wants to murder people all the time. She knows that about herself and she doesn't want to do it but she knows she shouldn't do it. So she locks herself inside her apartment and she's been there for the past three years and she pays um, one of her neighbors in drugs to come and lock her door from the outside every night so that she cannot get out. But in the morning, she can open the door to like get packages and bring them inside. So the guy who's delivering her packages is like obsessed with her, like the idea of who she is and what she's doing and all this different stuff. 
And one day she, oh, by the way, she's a webcam girl. That's how she makes all this money is she does camming um, on a lot of different websites and stuff. Like she's basically like an entrepreneur. Like she makes a bunch of money on the internet. And he comes by when she's doing one of these really rowdy sessions and he thinks she's in danger or she's being attacked. So he comes in the door and you know things fall apart from there but it is very entertaining and then also she's kind of like an evangelic like a just like a vigilante because one of her clients is like she he's always having her dress up as like this really young girl that he keeps calling by a certain name so she's like i think this is somebody in his actual life and she basically like goes on this whole adventure to like find him and stop him from like molesting this girl. It's very entertaining. It is very interesting. It is not for everybody. I'm going to tell you that like it, there's a lot of like inside the head of a pedophile in this as well, which is like really creepy. Um, but it's very like if Dexter met 50 shades of gray, that would be what this book is about. And like, I loved it. Like if you love that weird shit, then you'll love this book. All right, we'll begin our stack here. And the next book I read is A Good Marriage by Kimberly McRae. Now, this is something that is, it's a very good book. It is very well written. Um, I got a little bored while I was reading it. I felt like it was like pretty long and it was kind of a little difficult to like follow along with some of the stuff that was happening. Like there's, okay, there's a couple different timelines. I'm saying all this because I'm saying it's a good book and I'm gonna talk about it like it's kind of boring, but that's just me. Like say Gabby from Gabby Reads really loved this book and I totally agree, like the book is, very good. It just didn't grab me the way I wanted it to. This book is about a character named Lizzie and she is a lawyer or like an upcoming lawyer or she's a, she's not a trial lawyer. She does, she does, she's a lawyer for something else. Anyway, um, one of her old college friends, Zach, uh, calls her from Rikers and is like, I need your help. I've been arrested. My wife is dead come bail me out sis and she's like how did you get this number <laughs> but he's like so intense he's like no no you have to do it you have to do it. you have to save me you have to save me and she's like um I don't like to say no so I guess I'll do it and it's like oh my god her getting trapped into this was like kind of a nightmare but anyway it's her trying to figure out what happened to his wife Amanda and there's this big like sex party that one of her neighbors or like friends holds every year and that plays a big part in it and like all these people that are like swapping spouses and like hiding secrets from each other like it's it's kind of got the vibe of like big little lies but i loved big little lies okay it, okay it's like if you took big little lies but it was in a courtroom that makes it sound more interesting it is. If you like that kind of thing, A plus. Courtroom stuff, it's just not like, it's not super for me. Do you remember what I said earlier that I don't like romance and there's one notable exception? <laughs> Here it is. Get a life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I, ooh, I adore this book. I adored it. I was listening to this during some of the many steamy, steamy, steamy change at work and it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. I was literally like, Guys. guys I've got to go and just would like walk around the building because it was so intense like I am not an erotic reader I just don't care like I don't care about eroticism I'm not a big romance person but there was something about Redford there was something about him sis a plus. Everybody that's telling you to go read this book, they are 100% right. Okay, so this book is following a character who has fibromyalgia and deals with a lot of chronic pain, like a lot of chronic pain. And also the representation of that was phenomenal, in my opinion. And she is like a very well off, like she's a rich, like curvy black girl. And then there's Redford, who is like an artist who's kind of emo, like red hair, and is basically like ugh, hipsters, but then like is a little bit of a hipster, like just a skosh. But anyway, um, the emotional depth of these characters are freaking phenomenal. And like, basically she gets into like a near death experience kind of, and is like, 
I need to live my life because I've been just dealing with this pain and not doing anything with my life. So she makes a list. We love a list and she wants to scratch everything off. And one of the things that she is she, that she moves out of her parents' house and then she wants to have like meaningless sex with somebody. She wants to do something bad, like go on a trip. She wants to do all these things. And Redford is somebody that like works for her leasing office. So she has to see him all the time. And they have like this like it's like an enemies to lovers but it is done so well because it's just like the bickering between them and like the snarkiness is like so good and like let me tell you when I say it gets heated when I say it gets like steamy I listen to the audio I don't know oh my god it's so good like it's so good like you just and it has such a satisfying ending. It's so satisfying. Like you don't really have any of that stupid miscommunication bullshit that you have in a lot of other romances. And I cannot wait to read Take a Hint, Danny Brown. Like I'm so freaking pumped. Like she has three sisters, Evie, Danny, and um, Chloe. Chloe's the one we're following in this book. But they're all getting their own books. And I'm like literally so excited. For the next book, I have Invisible Monsters by Chuck Palahniuk. Now, I have read Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk. I think I started reading Choke a couple times and DNF'd it every time, but um, Fight Club is one of my favorite books of all time, and I've actually heard a theory that says, like, whichever Chuck Palahniuk book you read first is going to be the one that is your favorite because of his writing style being so different and weird. The first time you read it, you're like, oh my god, Pew. But like every other time after that, it's like, okay, well, I've read something like that before, but this is really good. I actually, I don't know. I This is pretty on par, in my opinion, with Fight Club. Um, this is like, if Fight Club, like Fight Club is like two dudes being like, fuck consumerism, fuck the man. And this book is like two women being like, well, we're just going to be the best at it. It is so weird. Like it's hard to even grab like, telling you what this book is about but it's basically like this model gets her jaw blown off um by a rifle like a stray bullet while she's driving just freaking clean cuts half her face off and she wears veils after that because she's literally like missing half her face and she can't talk and there's this girl that she meets named brandy alexander in the hospital and she's just this like pill popping wild child. And they basically get in a car and drive around the United States going to open houses and stealing drugs from rich people. It is a wild ass ride. And this is the remix. So it is told um, if you read it in chronological order, it's told in chronological order. If you get the um, just invisible monsters, then it is told in varying timelines. Like one chapter will be like, oh, three years ago. And then the next chapter will be like 15 years ahead. And it, it's just insane. I mean, even reading it chronologically, it was so confusing, but it is phenomenal. And the way he writes is like absolutely fantastic. And I will tell you that the thing that made this book like so, so good is that there's so many plot twists. Like in Fight Club, there's one plot twist. In this book, there's like at least seven that had me like blown away. Like so many things like, how her jaw got blown off, like who Brandy Alexander is, who this, uh, I can't remember what the other guy's name was, but there's another, or the guy that's like with them too, like all the shit about him and like his life. And then also hearing about like the narrator who you never really know their name, but like the narrator's backstory is like, what am I reading? It's good, I would recommend. Next up is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This is the first Blake Crouch book I've read. I am um, anticipating reading Recursion in the next two months, I believe. But this book is so good. Like, I really, really love this. This has, if you've ever seen Wayward Pines or if you've ever read Wayward Pines, it's the same author and this has a lot of those vibes. But basically it's a guy named Jason Dessen who is like the most Jason Bourne name. Like, am I right? But anyway, um, Jason Dessen is uh, a teacher and he is like a scientist. And basically at one point he goes out to get something from the store and somebody puts a gun to his back and is like, get in the car. They get in the car and he drives them somewhere and is like, it turns out that it's him from the future. So there's all these different timelines and basically he created something where you could like hop from timeline to timeline, like this alternate 
versions of yourself. Of course, the him in the present that, that we're following has not done that. But in one of the other timelines, he did create this. And that timeline of him is not thoroughly happy. So he looks through all of his timelines and is like, that guy is the happiest. I want to be him. So takes over his life. And then our Jason Desson, the original narrator, is trying to break out of this timeline, is trying to find the timeline he's looking for. And oh my god, it's just so crazy. Like that concept is so freaking wild. And there are so many like different timelines of himself that he sees that are like sad or happy. And then that's also sad because it's like you could have been happier and all these things he could have accomplished or might not have accomplished. And it's just a wild ride. Like as far as real sci-fi goes, this is probably the best I've ever read. Guys, we're circling back to the why do I keep reading romance thinking shit is gonna change. The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. I did not care. I did not care. Did not like it. I don't know what's wrong with me. Why do I keep doing this? Like, okay, if you told me the synopsis, I'd be like, yes, sis, I want to read that. Wasn't a great time. Did not like it. Honestly, like kind of hated it. Like the Unhoneymooners was better is what I'm saying. But this book, I do not remember the characters' names, do not care, um, is about, okay, so basically I don't understand how Chip and Joanna Gaines did not just like absolutely sue Christina Lauren for like ripping off their entire lives. But anyway, if you imagine Chip and Joanna Gaines, which if you've been to Target, you know who they are. If you've opened up um, a catalog, if you've read HG, or if you've seen HGTV, you know who they are. But um, it's basically like those two characters have a TV show and book series and this whole thing, and they're very famous. Their assistants are the main characters of the book, but in my opinion, they're not. Like, it's supposed to be an enemies to lovers, and it's not. The guy literally never does anything that he, she should be considering him an enemy. And wow, that was like true in the last book too. Okay, anyway, he literally never does a thing wrong. He's totally great. And she's like, doesn't like, I don't know why she doesn't like him. It's just like, didn't make sense. Anyway, mainly you're following the relationship of the other two, like the Chip and Joanna couple. And they're horrible, horrible, literally horrific. Like, he like cheats on her and, she, and she's like a freaking uh, a hidden alcoholic. Like it's this whole freaking mess. And it's supposed to be that that is supposed to bring these other two characters together. But really it's just like sad and bad. Like I feel like a lot of people like this book and I'm not trying to drag you. I'm dragging this book and I don't like it. And I'm sure a lot of that is just because I don't really care about romance. But there was just literally like, I'm pretty sure like nothing redeemable about this book to me. I just did not like it. But after that, I did read And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, and I absolutely adore this book. I adore this story. I adore the whole bit. Like, I played Vera Claythorne in And Then There Were None, the play, when I was in high school. It was my um, senior year play, and I absolutely adore it. The play is absolutely phenomenal, and the book held true to my memory. Now, I had never read the book before, but the play is pretty dead on to the book. And it was a while ago, so it was still amazing for me to read it because I had forgotten so many things. And it is so, so good. Like Agatha Christie really like created the hype of mystery in my opinion. So the book is about 10 characters and they're like the 10 little soldiers. Um, and they all receive a letter from UN Owen, who of course, like when you spell it out, it's unknown, but they all receive a letter telling them to go to this island, um, for different reasons. And they're all vastly different. Like none of the characters have anything in common. And when they get to the island, uh, there's a like poem about these 10 little soldiers and how each of the soldiers dies. And then of course, as you can imagine, and as I'm sure you already know, um, through the course of the story, they start getting picked off one by one. And it's how it happens, or at least something that is like very close to what happens in the poem. And you're trying to figure out like who's doing it, why they're doing it, who's gonna die next. It's so riveting. Like this is like, probably what I would define as a page turner. Like you cannot put this book down. You cannot, like, trust me, it is so, it's so, it's great. I'm sorry, guys, I'm sorry. I know you're literally absolutely sick of hearing me rattle on and on and on about this book, 
but the diviners by Luba Bray I mean I did read it this month this is the second time I read it and um just as phenomenal as the first time honestly more phenomenal than the first time freaking adore this let's just I'll just jump in really quick I'll have linked above um I have a reading vlog for this so I'll have that but this book is about diviners and diviners are people who are like 17 to 18 who have a supernatural ability like our main character in this book evie o'neill evie o'neill if she touches something of yours she can read your secrets or she can see your past she can see your memories there is another character um, memphis who is a healer there's a character henry who can walk in dreams um just a lot of different things like that now none of them know each other it's in new york city it's in the 20s by the way so good atmospheric as fuck <sighs> anyway in new york city at the time there's a serial killer chopping off and taking people's body parts why you'll find out um but basically all of these diviners get thrust together for various reasons and have to solve this crime and have to stop this guy from doing all this like satanic panic shit on people and it's so good and let me tell you the relationships are just freaking primo primo my friend the atmosphere primo like do you see i'm i'm just i'm in love with it okay that's all i'm gonna say now if you've been following my uh, videos for the last couple weeks this will not be a shock to you but it's layer of dreams also by libra bray because this is the second book in the diviners series now in the first book you're following evie o'neill and a cast of other characters in this book the main character is henry and then also ling who is a new character that gets um not introduced but gets is more prevalent in this book and i mean obviously you're following all the characters but they're the main ones because in this one it is about dreams and it's about a uh the monster of the week is um somebody who is like infesting people's dreams they're going into people's dreams in new york and um basically like saying like come with me like you don't want to wake up you don't want to wake up life could be so perfect if you lived in this dream and then they don't wake up and they go into a coma they can't eat they can't drink and they die and it's happening to a bunch of people in new york city and again just like in the first one all the characters are kind of brought into this because of some reason like maybe somebody they love um falls into this sleeping sickness or somebody they work with or their best friend it's somebody they love something like that so because Ling and Henry are both dreamwalkers, they are going to be the main players in the story. It is really, really good. I will say um, I did not enjoy this as much as the, as the Diviners. This is a phenomenal book, but this was a four star for me, whereas the Diviners was like five stars shooting off into the sun. Five stars. I'm going to give you all three guesses as to what the last book I read this month is. Oh, I'm sorry. What? Oh, you're all screaming the same thing? <gasps> it's Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. You guessed it, sis. This is the last book I read this month. This is the third book in the Diviner series. It is a quartet, so I will be reading the next one as soon as my heart can handle it. <sighs> I will have, oh God, I'm doing a reading vlog for this, but it is not going to come out in the next couple days. So just look forward to that. But this is the third book. Tabs, tabs, tabs. This book is going from where in the last two books you were following a certain character. In this one, you were following Theta and Mabel and more heavily following everybody else. Like this is much more like cast relevant or crew relevant. In this one, um, it's about Project Buffalo, which if you've read the books, you'll know. But basically it's like an X-Men kind of thing where like there's like a faction kind of of the government that is like studying and experimenting on people trying to create diviners and see what they can do and study them and this book is about that and about the past and how all of the clues and all of the foreshadowing that you've been reading about in book one and two just ramps up and up and up and up and up and up and it just all oh, comes to fruition i'm actually shook that there's a fourth book because i'm like i feel like we got so much satisfaction in so many things that happen in here who i'm so i literally can't i don't know what i'm gonna do with the fourth book i don't know Anyway, uh, this book made me cry. This book made me cry several times. And that's another reason why I'm like so shocked there's gonna be a fourth book because I don't think I can handle it. But it's so freaking phenomenal. Like where the fourth book, or sorry, where the second book lulled for me, this picked up with a vengeance. This is five stars. I'm literally like, am I also gonna put this on my favorites list? Or am I just gonna put the diviners and let that speak for itself? But this is so, so good. And something that Libba Bray really, really highlights in this book that I was so appreciative of 
is diversity. And this is um, was published in 2019 or 2017, I believe, which would have been um, right after Donald Trump was elected. And there's a character, Jake Marlowe, who is Donald Trump. Like if Donald Trump and Elon Musk had a baby, it would be Jake Marlowe. And the speeches he gives and the things he believes are literally things that you've heard come out of Donald Trump's mouth. But she has a lot of moments in this book where she really highlights adversity and diversity and representation and what that means and this is in the 20s and it's so touching and it's so heartwarming and heartbreaking and she did such a phenomenal job and you all are seriously sleeping on this series you're all sleeping on it there is an entire chapter where she just talks about how fucked up america is and how fucked up like the American dream is and how America looks at every other country and how America looks at like every other race that, race that isn't white. And it is so amazing. Like, let me just read one thing out of this. So it says, the history of the land is a history of blood. In this history, someone wins and someone loses. There are patriots and enemies. Names are erased. The conqueror tells the story. The colonizer writes the history winning twice, a theft of land, a theft of witness. Oh, but let's not speak of such things. Look, here's an eagle whipping above the vast grasslands where the buffalo once thundered bold as gods. I love Libba Bray. Like, I love her so much. Is it gonna fit? Oh my god, we did it again. So that's gonna wrap up the 11 books that I finished September of 2020 with. I am so happy that you guys are loving these videos. If there's anything that you want to see me do, you want to see me talk about, to read, any challenges, I love challenges, please. If there's any challenges you want me to do, please comment them down below. I will absolutely listen to any suggestion you give. I will also have linked below my Instagram and my Goodreads if you want to follow me or friend me on there. I am accepting friends on Goodreads right now and I can always use more friends on Instagram, so check me out. Also, if you want to subscribe to this channel, that would be freaking dope, okay? That would be dope. The dopest, I dare say. You could also like this video if you felt so inclined, because that would be pretty dope as well. You could share it. I mean, I'm not telling you what to do. Like, you could share it. I mean, you could send it to your friends or something. Like, I mean, I'm not going to, like, be mad if you do that. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye.